And, and all of a sudden, July 16th, 1988, um, like this they. was the first time we mentioned that Puerto Rican wrestling had almost uh, almost died and then resurrected itself mm -hmm. on a number of occasions. This was the first time people predicted after this 15 year boom period, Gone. Bruiser Brody yeah. was killed in the locker room, Jose well, Gonzalez. Well, he, he, don't, he don't die in the locker room. Well, he, 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 he was, was stabbed, stabbed and then he yeah. died as a result of the locker room incident. Died, man. I've talked to Dutch about it a bunch. He was there and actually he walked outside to look at the house and came back in yeah. and there was chaos. I, I, was, I was there. What? What do you know? What did you see? What were your thoughts? What, what happened that night? Well, um, Lubria Stadium, no more wrestling there. They switched uh, to uh, soccer, you know? <clears throat> and uh, I hear they don't want no more wrestling there. I'm gonna try to have a new company there and I'm gonna try to go there one of these days. Uh, that day, I always arrive uh, early because I was using the paint and I never let the people see me without the paint. Right. I use, uh, uh, you know, the cold uh, hat, you know, all the way to my neck with my eyes open, you know. Yeah. And I put my glasses because I was blind. So uh, I arrive, I change, and uh, here the van arrived with uh, Dutch, the Young Bloods, Tony Atlas, Brody. Invader 2 was there too. Invader 1, Jose Gonzalez, Carlos and Jovica. Uh, by the time we've been asking and talking to people about what happened there, why, uh, one of the person that probably could tell us, you know, more close pass away too, Victor Quinones. Uh, that week they bring Brody Wednesday to do TV. Mm -hmm. And that week we work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, and Brody was traveling with Quinones. I guess Jose already had that bullshit in his head uh, because he was traveling with Brody and uh, Quinones in the same car. So they were riding together all week. Gonzalez if he wanted to do something, Brody. he probably could do it somewhere else, you know? But no, happened in a dressing room. But one of the things that I always, uh, you know, analyzing this case, which was a lot of money involved, uh, the case wasn't done the right way. Uh, Jovica never was in the dressing room. He was in the front all the time with the money. Right. And that day he's there. I remember like happened two minutes ago uh, I'm in my corner. They say this is my corner. I got a wall here and a wall here. Uh, in that area there was Jovica, Carlos, and, and Invader. Brody passed, you know, passed, uh, changed in that area. So they there. were all three they, talking uh, and they uh, were in the locker room. It was a big room. Yeah. It was a big, the dressing room was, you know, base, baseball locker room, a big, huge dressing room. Here come Invader, get up, walk towards the ring area, which is, in a, you know, to the dugout area. Uh -huh. And come back. When he come back, he come back with the towel. And he come, you know, pass, pass in front of me there and talk to uh, Frank and say, can I talk to you? So every time he do that or somebody to call the finish, you know, and you sit yeah. down with somebody, hey, this, you know. Uh, but this time when they went through the door to the uh, showers area, I went to the bathroom. The bathroom area is separate from the showers. Uh, when I went there to that area, that's when uh, we hear some noise, to be honest. And I could look the camera and look anybody. Uh, I thought that Brody was beating Invader. <laughs> For some reason, yeah. that come in my head, but was the other way around. I went, in, I was, I went there and I run all, you know, outside. When I run, I mean, this is from here to the wall over there. When I run, you know, out of the bathroom to that area, all the boys already there. When I have the chance to get in, because we, I pushed uh, Tony Atlas and I, I don't know who else, and I went inside there. What I catch to see is Jobica grabbing Invader by the waist, pushing him, you know, back. Carlos is in the other side over there, and Brody was pulling back 
because Jose grabbed him by the hair and he had the nice knife and he tried to, you know, hit it in the head. But Brody was already pushing, you know, he would push him back. What I was guessing what happened there, when you open the door, let's say you open the door here and you go inside, it's a wall right here. So all the showers here in that area. So uh, my best guess is when, when that happened and Brody opened the door and get inside, Inverter is right here, stop him right there. You know, he, not, yeah. he never have a chance to do nothing, to do nothing. Maybe throw the towel in his face, I don't know. Or, or, I mean, I, you come in, I, hey, I call you to talk. Yeah. And he, he, had, he had his hand he had, wrapped in a towel, yeah, so he, had, he the, had the knife you already. You have it there. When he came mm -hmm. back in, and when he walked, there was no reason to suspect anything. There had been no words between no. them that anybody knew what? about. They'd been riding in the same car together. The, uh, Brody was a smart guy. Yeah. He wouldn't have put himself in a position. No. And Brody like that went if he inside had there. Inkling. He got his purse with him, you know, and they just walk normal. Nothing happened. Just, just hey, let, let me talk to you. That's it. And boom, that shit happened. Now, when Brody come out, he walk out grabbing his gut, and he's walking towards the the the, the dog out. And I stop him. I remember I stopped and I was with Chris Jumbler and I stopped and I said, don't go that way. That's the ring area. So Dr. Gonzalez just arrived. He's a local doctor. And he tell him to lay down. I went to outside with Chris Jumbler in, in, in underwear uh, to lo looking for the office. By that time in Puerto Rico wasn't no 911. Wasn't that fancy gaga. You know fancy, right. but that's, that's very important. No? But, I tried to, I mean, I know I almost knocked that door. It was a steel door down. And here come the uh, administrator. And I tell him. Because you were trying to get to a phone, right? I tried to get to a phone to get an ambulance. And uh, I talked to him and I just went, hey, I tried to explain. He said, let me see. I said, you don't have to see shit. Go and call, call, call. Yeah. Next door, uh, Ruben, uh, Ruben uh, Rodriguez Coliseum was Menudo. These uh, the singer uh, kids by uh, the time. The boy band, a boy, boy band, band yeah. Menudo. They have ambulance, they have all that stuff over there. But to reach them, somebody need to run there and blah, blah, blah. Well, the, the uh, ambulance took almost 40 minutes, maybe an hour to arrive. By that time, uh, Brody was laying down. Dr. Gonzalez checked on him. And he see uh, he saw bubbles coming out, and he said it's, it's bad. He said it's pretty bad. Brody was talking to uh, Carlos, and uh, re I remember here a little bit, and he said, "Tell my wife and my kid that I love them." And he, I, I, I guess he know that he's gonna pass away because yeah. he was already telling him stuff, you know, and, and he was telling him about something about the insurance and and he loved them and well. Here come the ambulance, put him on a stretcher outside. Uh, uh, that's, that's one of the things the uh, Tony Adela says. He helped them, you know, to carry him, big guy, 300 some pounds. So I put him in the uh, ambulance and took him off. Uh, when the show finished, we went to, uh, to the police station because we need to talk to them. You know, they want to, uh, you know, interview us. I finished there about three or something in the morning, four o'clock, I don't know. Talk to them and tell them exactly what I saw. Uh, next day, I went to Maya West, to the West area, was then the other big show. But I didn't even know that, that he was passed away already. I arrived in the building and I went to the front to talk to Isaac Rosario. And I said, Isaac, well, how is his condition? He said, he passed away. Uh, uh, when where, had, where had Gonzalez gone after that? He went to his house. He went home and he changed clothes, he, didn't he, he? Well, no, he not changed clothes. He have a, a, a pink shirt that says not to drugs and a, a blue uh, uh, tank top. I mean, a blue uh, pants uh, for wrestling, you know, tights. And his wrestling boots. He was ready to, to work. You know, six o'clock, he already changed. The show is at 8.30, but he was the booker. So he got yeah. prepared himself, of course you know, to, to give the finishes and So whatever. he goes home, but then he comes back. Well, after he did what he did, he stayed there, I don't know, 
10 minutes, maybe more, more, more than 10 minutes. I know that because I was next to Brody in the right, in his right hand, his uh, feet to touch the wall. He lay down there and Jose come out. When Jose come out, I get up. I was on my knees. I get up because what I thought was this motherfucker is going to jump on him again and I'm going to jump on him. Yeah. His Jose get up, I mean, come out, went around him, grabbed his keys and left. He left. What he do with the knife, I always say that, the, that knife is in the river in, nearby when, where he live at. And uh, they took Brody to the, to the uh, hospital, like I said. And uh, when I asked Isaac Rosario, he told me he passed away. I uh, just went, woof. I went back to the dressing room, sit down. I was by myself in that dressing room. Here arrived Carlos, Jovica, and, and, and Jose. When they arrive, they uh, say hello, and you know, and uh, I said to Carlos, you know, that he passed away. He said, yeah. And Jose comments was, yeah, if he be born again, I do it again. And I just, I just went like, motherfucker. They canceled the show because all those guys from the states they stay in a hotel. They say they're not gonna wrestle. Yeah. Because if that, was, that night at the show where it happened, mm -hmm. uh, the, the show happened but, normal. Like well, nothing happened. But Brody was a big name. Yeah. He was at a big, important mm -hmm. match. Did what announcement, if any, did they make to the people about why he? Well, was Well, the rumors started running. With the lo you know, wasn't too many people there neither. They opened the doors wasn't open yet. Okay. You know, so a couple of fans around, and uh, but the word start spread big time, and people start talking. The cheeky star is the one that did that. They all the others say the invaders brother was the one to do that. He used his mask. People start making yeah, stupid stuff. They stories. start making yeah, stuff. But Brody was in the hospital, you know, by that time. And, uh, when Gonzalez came back to the show, did anybody nobody say did nothing? What? Nobody happened. Uh, everybody's in shock. I was in my corner. I paid my face. I asked if the show's gonna happen. Carlos said yes. So. He arrived, he, uh, Jose arrived, and he started giving the finishes to everybody and like nothing happened. You know, and uh, another comment that he made that night, that fucking night, is uh, the police was talking to Tony Atlas. Bad, the, uh, that police don't speak English. So Invader 2 was translating. And I remember... And he was his, uh, Jose's brother. Right? No, 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 that's not his brother. That's oh. it was his partner. He better his, par his part. Okay. Uh, but Soto. So the partner of the guy that did it is translating the, the witness police. report to the police police through with uh, Tony Atlas. <sighs> when he's doing that, I remember Jose was next to me. Tell him he's going to start to tell me the finish. And uh, he said, what's going to happen with this son of a bitch? He won uh, the happen the same shit to him. I remember, I just look at him like, what a motherfucker. He was full of fucking hate, I guess. I don't know. Why we, we start asking that question? I hear the Jose was a big, not big time, but was okay with Vince Sr. And Brody went there one time and, and Vince Sr. told him to, you know, take care of the, the guy. And Brody beat the fuck out of him. That's what I hear. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard that because, well, at the time Brody was being pushed. Mm. Jose was underneath guy. Boom, he saw him like a know. jobber, you know, yeah. and, and beat him up. And uh, but why, why would he? He's been what, riding around with time. the guy. Those it's been ones. years from that. He's been riding around with the guy that week. Brody is a major attraction for the company Here we go. that he's the booker for. Yeah, was that, there any question of finishes, angles, business? All the other story was Carlos and Jovica was pushing Invader because Invader is the head booker. And Brody arrived in shorts, and he, they no one known of the boys coming in shorts and stuff like that. They want to take care of the image of wrestling. You know, Carlos and Jovica always with suits and shit like that. Of course, motherfuckers, they making fucking $5,000 a week yeah. or $10,000 a week. They could afford whatever they want, you know, but the rest have to come with the old jeans and shit like that, yeah. you know. So uh, they want the image of wrestling. They want it, you know, be clean. And they don't want nobody in shorts. But you're telling a guy from the States coming to Puerto Rico, what they see is vacation. 
What they see is the beach. They they see they smoke a joint and have uh, nice uh, nice uh, time there. You know, let's yeah. make some money and go home. So it's hot. So they of course Brody yeah. always was in shorts. Like he was in Japan too. You know, but that's not you that's, know exactly. It, that's it, not there, excuse no, to do there's that. There's no common sense reason Nothing. for no, this. No, no reason. No warning at it ever happened. So. One of the things that, that we talk in, you know, we, we hear the stories, the Jose and Carlos was, Jose and Jovica was telling the uh, Jose, he no respect you, you need to do something. You know, do something about this. You know, you, you've been telling that so many times. So they were poking the bear. Although they, uh, and I always say they, they are the real motherfuckers. No, Jose. Because Carlos they didn't, use, from Carlos's reaction, Jose. he didn't seem to be too broken up about this whole they thing. They almost got Jose in jail lying in the, in the uh, what's it called? The, the trial. When I finish my trial. Perjury. Yeah, when I finish, the, the judge say, if you want to stay, you stay to see the rest. I said, I want to go home. I want to get out of here. Yeah. I remember one of the days they canceled uh, because of whatever happened, and I went back home was noon, was hot in Puerto Rico. I was in my room with my, uh, my windows closed and I, my blanket, I, I was shaking. I was shaking big time. That, that I mean, here up here somewhere, yeah. something went fucked up. A lot, of, a lot of people know the story of the aftermath of the subpoenas to the American guys arrived a after week, the trial. A week, a month later. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I, sorry, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. One of the things that I always say is, is that, I say, why you not bring the guys from the States? You got all these people here. Why they not come and, and I mean, it's supposed to the state is the one have to grab the witness and bring them back if they have a case. And they have a case, you got a murder. But at the same time, Carlos Colon. Influences, big time. Influence. Money. Rich man. Important man, TV money, star, money, sports hero. You. They brought Jose back on the television in the weeks leading up to the trial, right, to, yeah. to make him a baby face. <laughs> they so, tried to blame Brody. That Brody is the one have the, the knife in his uh, purse. Uh, the wild, crazy American. Look at him. Look at the pictures. Look at him. He's always, you know, the furry they boots. To, they sell in the trial that Brody was like that in the real life. I remember when I sit down there, they asked me, how is this person? And they have a picture of him with his hair like that, and you know? So it's like, when I, I say, well, he's a nice people that I know that, that I've been working with him. I worked with him when I was a security guard. Then I wrestled against him, you know, and always was a good people with me. You still had to work there, or you were still yeah. working there. Yeah. What, was anything ever said to you about? No, no, they never said nothing to me but the stress was there. Do you think it's almost that it looked like we don't care what Juan says because we already know what's gonna happen? We, we, we got the, 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 the pan, the hot pan we have it by the handle. Uh, you want the pan, you have to grab the other side. Well, it's, no, it's hot. Well, yeah. I'm the one that have it, so shut the hell up.